Hey, what's up guys? My name is The Cherno and welcome back to my C++ series. First of all, haircut. Second of all, today we're gonna to be talking all about libraries in C++ and specifically how we can use external libraries in our project. So if you're used to other languages such as Java or C Sharp or Python or something like that, adding libraries is a pretty trivial task. You might be using a package manager, you might not be, but either way, it's usually pretty straightforward. When it comes to C++, everyone seems to have problems. And back in the day, I had issues with this as well, and I, I don't even know why. It's actually really simple, and hopefully this video will kind of help clear it up for you. But basically, there are a few strategies that we can actually take when we're dealing with libraries in C++, and I'm gonna kind of show you my way, as well as maybe discuss some of the other ones. But first of all, I hate the idea of package managers and I hate the idea of linking to kind of other repositories or all of that stuff. My, my ideal project setup is that if you check out my, my repository, my code repository from GitHub or whatever, you should have everything you need in that repository just straight away for you, for you to actually be able to compile and run the application or the project or whatever, right? There should be no kind of syncing up with package managers, downloading other libraries, all of that stuff. I hate all of that. I just want, especially with C++, there are some package managers for other kind of languages which makes sense. I'm specifically obviously talking about C++, this is the C++ series, but for C++, I just want stuff to work. I just want to be able to clone the repository and I want it to compile and run. So for that reason, I tend to actually keep versions of my dependencies, of the libraries that I'm using in the actual solution, in the actual project uh, folder. So I've actually got copies of those that phys those physical binaries or code, depending on which way I go with that as well, uh, in my actual kind of working directory of my solution. That kind of brings me to another point. Should I be compiling these myself or should I just be linking against pre-built binaries? Now, for most serious projects, I would absolutely recommend actually building the source code. If you're using Visual Studio, you can just add another project which contains your kind of source code of your dependency of your library and then compile that into either a static or dynamic library. However, if you don't have access to the source code or if you're kind of just, this is a quick project, I don't wanna spend time setting this up because it's kind of a throwaway thing or it's just a, uh, it's nothing serious. Uh, then I would probably link against the binaries because it's just going to be quicker and easier. So today specifically we're going to be linking against binaries. We're not going to be grabbing the source code of an actual kind of dependency of an actual library and compiling it ourselves. I might save that for another video if you're interested in that. Let me know, leave a comment below. But today we're just going to be dealing with binaries. And specifically what we're going to be dealing with is a library called GLFW. Now my OpenGL series, which is all about OpenGL and graphics programming and stuff like that, in episode 2, which I've linked up there as well, we actually did download GLFW and link it so you can take a look at that if you'd like. Maybe I show some extra uh, uh, some extra things there, but today we're actually gonna go through it slowly and take a look at everything. But if you kind of wanna see it in a context of a real application, then check that series out. Another thing to note is that binaries might not be available for your actual project, right? For your actual library that you want to link. So you may actually be forced to build it yourself. This is especially true with like Mac and Linux because for Unix systems, people usually just love building code. For Windows, a lot of people who use Windows just want stuff to work. Like like me, I just want things to work. So that's why pre-built binaries exist. And again, I'm just saying that in a, in a more kind of professional and larger project in a, in a space where I actually had time, I would for sure compile it myself because it helps with debugging. It helps with if you want to modify the library and change it a little bit. I do that quite frequently. I just love having it, having the source code right there in the individual studio solution. But today, Let's talk about binaries. So over here we have glfw.org, which contains the, which is the glfw website. There are a few downloads here. If you click this download button, it will download the source code for glfw. But instead we're going to go to download and you can see that we have pre-compiled binaries for Windows. Another great example here, you can see for Linux and Mac OS, you have to compile it yourself. But for Windows, we have these binaries. Now, this brings us to our first question. Do I want 32-bit binaries or 64-bit binaries? This has nothing to do with your actual operating system. If you're running Windows 10 64-bit like I am, that doesn't mean that you should be grabbing the 64-bit binaries. What that means, or like the way that you choose the ones you want is for your target, for, like for your application target. So if I'm compiling my application 
as an x86 application, as a Win32 application, then I would want the 32-bit binaries. If I'm compiling a 64-bit application, I want 64-bit binaries. Make sure you match them together, because if you don't, they won't link. So in this case, I'm going to just be making a 32-bit application, so I'm going to grab the 32-bit Windows binaries and download them. Once I've downloaded and extracted them, we'll have this folder over here. Inside there, we have a bunch of folders and some other text files. And this is kind of the typical layout, I guess, or the typical organizational structure that we have with libraries in C++. There are two parts to a library usually, includes and libraries, right? So an include kind of directory and a library directory or a lib directory. So what the include directory is, is a bunch of header files. If you don't know how linking works in C++ or what I even mean by linking, check out the how C++ linker works video that I've made in the top right corner there. It covers this stuff in depth. But basically the include directory has a bunch of header files that we need to use so that we can actually use functions that are in the pre-built binaries. And then the lib directory has those pre-built binaries. And there are usually two phases to this, right? There's usually dynamic libraries and static libraries. Not all libraries actually supply, uh, not, not all libraries supply both of them for you. GLFW does though, and you can choose if you want to link statically or dynamically. We're going to talk a lot about the differences between static and dynamic linking in another video specifically about that, but I'll cover the differences uh, for you kind of simply here. Static linking means that the library actually gets basically put into your executable. So just it's inside your .exe file or whatever your executable is for your operating system. Whereas a dynamic library gets actually linked at runtime. So you still do have some kind of linkage. You can choose to load a dynamic library kind of just on the fly. Literally there's a function called load library, which you can use in the Windows API as an example. And that will load you like your dynamic library and you can pull function pointers out of that and start calling functions that way. But you can also have a kind of at the application launch, it loads your .dll file, which is your dynamic link library. Again, we're not gonna to talk too much in depth about this, but there's just that, that difference of whether or not your library actually gets compiled into your exe file or linked into your exe file. Um, and actually having a separate file for your library at runtime, which you need to have alongside your exe file or just somewhere so that your exe file can actually load that. Different stuff. Because of that kind of dependency of you now need to have a DLL file as well as your exe file, usually I like to go for static linking whenever possible. Static linking is also technically faster because the compiler or the link can actually perform kind of link time optimization and all of that stuff. Linking statically can technically result in a faster application because there are several optimizations that can be applied since we actually know the function that we're linking kind of at, at actual, at link time. Whereas with dynamic libraries, we don't know what's gonna happen. We have to leave it intact. And when the library actually gets loaded by our application at runtime, that's when the paths kind of get patched up. So usually static linking is the way to go. But for this video, I'm going to demonstrate both of those strategies. So again, we have the include files and then we have the library files, two kind of components that we need to set up. So for our compiler in our Visual Studio project, we have to point it to the header files, to the include files, so that we actually know which functions we have available to us. And so that we have those function declarations, really they're symbol declarations, because they could also be variables. I'm just using functions as an example. And then we also have to point our linker to the library files and I'm waving my hands around a lot, but that's just how I talk, so deal with it. And then we also need to tell our linker, this is my library file, I want you to link this so that we actually get the function definitions linked correctly. Let's go ahead and do that for both static and dynamic libraries. So I've got this hello world project here in Visual Studio, it's very basic stuff, but what I'm actually going to do is inside the solution directory, make a folder called dependencies. This is how I actually manage my dependencies and my libraries. Inside dependencies, I'll make another folder called glfw, and inside there, I'm going to put the files that I actually downloaded, which, which are the GLRW library. So include and libvc2015. You can see here that they've actually appended kind of which compiler they used to actually compile this, this library file. So mingw, mingw64, um, and then basically all these versions of Visual Studio. We'll just pick the latest one. It doesn't really matter in the end. At the end of the day, they are just kind of compiled binaries and they will work with kind of either one, but we want to use the one that's most compatible with our current tool chain, which is VC 2015, because we're using Visual Studio 2017. So I'll copy that and the include into this folder here. Include, you can see, has a GLFW folder and then a bunch of header files, perfect. And lib has three files for us. glfw3.dll is the runtime kind of dynamic link library that we actually use if we're linking dynamically at runtime. And glfw3dll.lib is actually kind of the static library that we use with the DLL 
so that we don't have to actually ask the DLL, hey, can I please have a bunch of function pointers to all of these functions. The idea is that this lib file actually contains all of the locations of the functions and symbols inside glw3.dll so that we can actually link against them at compile time. So in comparison, if we didn't have this lib file, we could still use this stuff. However, we'd have to ask the DLL file for each function by name and actually be like, hey, I want glfw init or whatever. But this lib file already kind of contains all of those locations for us, so the linker can just link to them immediately. glfw3.lib, which you can see is significantly bigger than the other ones, is the static library. So this is what we link if we don't want compile time linking, and if we do that, we don't need this DLL file to be with our exe file at runtime. Okay, cool, so let's actually link this stuff. I'm going to right click on my Hello World project, hit properties, and the first thing I'll actually do, I'll go to CC++ general, and then in additional include directories, I'm going to specify my additional include directory. Now, note your configuration and platform. Make sure you're editing the right ones. I obviously want this to apply for all configurations, so I'll just hit all configurations. Now the include directory is the actual directory that goes into this include folder. So that's it. I could just copy this directory, but obviously you can see that it's in C, users, yarn, documents, very specific to my computer. If someone ends up cloning this from GitHub or something like that, they're not gonna have this path and their code isn't going to compile. What I actually want to do is have a path that is relative to this actual directory. So hello world is the directory with my solution, right? Everyone's going to have that if, if they check out my repository because this is my repository. So inside, so starting from this solution file, which I can do by typing in solution dir. This is a macro that you can use in Visual Studio. If I go under here into edit, you can see that it actually evaluates to this value, which is the solution directory. If I hit macros over here, I can see all of my macros and I can type in like solution dir as an example and you can see what it is. There's also things like project directory, which is the directory of the project. You can see that it's inside another hello world folder, but the one that we care about is solution directory. So we'll start off there. And then we'll basically get that relative path, which in this case is dependencies, glfw, and include. So I can just grab that and really just copy the end of that path starting in my solution directory folder. I'll paste it into here, hit enter, and that's it, I'm done. What I can now do is basically just include files relative to this directory. So this directory contains a glfw folder, which has a file called glfw3.h. So guess what I can do? I can just come in here and type in include glfw slash glfw3.h, just like that. And that will actually work. If I hit control F7 to compile my code, you can see that I get no errors. Now, because this is a compiler specified include path, I can also use angular brackets. And this kind of comes to the debate of, do I use angular brackets or do I just use quotes? My, there's no difference because quotes will actually check your relative parts first and if it doesn't find anything relative to this file, so relative to the main.cpp file, it will actually look for the compile, it'll look through the compiler include parts. Now, the way that I use this is basically if this source file is in Visual Studio, so if glw3.h is actually in, in inside my solution somewhere, maybe it's in a different project, I don't care, but it's inside this solution, it's included in the solution, then I will use quotes. If it's, an, if it's a completely kind of external dependency or an external library that isn't in, I'm not compiling it with Visual Studio, with this actual solution, then I'll use Angular brackets to kind of indicate that it's actually ex external. So for this case, I will write uh, my code like this. Now, I haven't actually linked against the libraries at all. So I've told the compiler that, hey, there's a bunch of functions. If I go to glfw3.h, you'll actually see that there's a bunch of stuff here. I have a function, for example, called glfw init. So let's try calling this. Over here in my code, I'll type in int a or something equals glfw init. I don't know why my curly brackets are black. That is the worst idea ever. Well, I'm gonna fix that after this video. Anyway, um, you can see that if I do glfw init like this, it looks like everything's fine. I can hit control F7 to compile my code. You can see I don't get any compile errors. But of course, if I try and actually build my project and run it, I'll just hit build. It's not gonna link correctly. And you'll get an error here that says, unresolved external symbol glfw init. This is the cause of so many problems for people. What this means is that you haven't linked your actual library. The linker can't find this glfw init function. If we actually go to the header file again and we take a look, it's just got a semicolon here. This doesn't tell us what the function actually does, it just tells us that the function exists. What we need to do is actually find a definition for that function. Now, we could provide one. I'll just show you, I'm showing you this so that you know how it works. So we know that glfw init takes no parameters and returns an integer. I could literally write glfw init here and just like return zero or something like that. And then now if I build this and compile it, 
you can see that it is going to successfully generate my hello world.exe file and it, the build will succeed because I'm actually providing a definition for this function. Now, obviously we don't want this definition. We want the one that's actually in the library. So we need to link against the library. Hopefully that clears things up. So I'll right click on hello world, hit properties, make sure again, I'm in all configurations and on the right platform, go to linker and then general. Now inside linker input is where I actually want to include that chillfw3.lib uh, file, right? I actually want to include it over here. However, I don't want to have to specify the entire path. So again, I could do like, you know, solution directory slash blah, blah, blah. I just want to keep this clean and just have chillfw3.lib here. So if I want to do that, I actually need to go back to general and set my additional library directory, just like I did in C++ general with my additional include directory. So this should be the root directory which contains my glfw3.lib library file. So again, I'll go over here into my glfw folder, go back here to lib, and then this is the directory I care about. So I'm going to grab this and copy it. And then I'm going to come back to additional library directories, type in solution dir, and then paste in that path just like that. Okay, so I've specified a library directory, and then I've also specified the name of a library file that is relative to that library directory. So if I hit okay, and I try and build this now, you can see that this works fine and we don't actually get any errors. And if I was to, for example, run this, let's just print the result of this to the console, hit F5. You can see that we actually get one printing here, which basically means that GLFW initialized successfully, so everything's working fine. Now, similarly to how I showed you how I actually manually added a GLFW init function definition, the same kind of applies for a header file, right? If I get rid of this include, or I don't have my header files, I just don't know that there's a function called GLFW init actually available. If I try and compile this code, it's not, it's not that it's not gonna link, it's just not gonna compile because there is no such function. The compiler can't see a function called glfw init. However, if I provide the actual declaration here by typing in glfw init and just returning nothing like that and hit F5 to run my code, the idea of this will actually work. However, in this specific case, we get an error because glfw is actually a C library and what we're doing here is mangling the name with C++. I'll have a video specifically about kind of using C with C++ and name mangling and actually what's going on here. But to cut this short, we need to actually add extern C to this function declaration, which basically just says that preserve this name as it is because you'll be linking against a library that was built in C. So now if we compile this code, you can see that it works successfully. And if I run it as well, we still get one. Same result that we got when we had the header file. So just remember, those header files are kind of just there so that you don't have to do this stuff yourself. It's not like the library linking is magic or the includes the magic or anything like that. It's just all components of a system that kind of go together. So the header files kind of just tell us which functions we have available by providing us with declarations. And then that library file provides us with definitions so that we actually can link to those functions and execute the appropriate code when we call the functions in our C++ code. Okay, I'm gonna wrap up the video there. I know we didn't talk about dynamic libraries, but this video has just been trailing on. I actually thought this would be pretty trivial to explain and it would take like five minutes, but as always, I've just gone pretty in depth and just talked about this a lot, which I think is a good thing. We're gonna talk about dynamic libraries in another video though. And specifically with that, I'll show you how to also kind of pull them out if you don't have a static library to go along with them like we do with GLFW. So in other words, I'll show you how to pull out functions and do all that kind of actual runtime linking as well as linking against an actual DLL but at compile time as well because there's a few kind of caveats with that as well. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, you can hit that like button. You can also help support the series on Patreon by going to patreon.com forward slash the channel. You'll get episodes early and there are some pretty cool new perks as well which you should check out. I will see you guys next time. Goodbye. Thank you.